31 welcome back to this gigantic box that says end behavior of power functions and this is going to look overwhelming but what we're talking about here when i say end behavior we're talking about the ends of the x-axis so what is ending we're going to the left and right end of the x-axis And when we get to the left and right end of the x-axis, we're curious about what the y values are doing. So as I head right, what's happening to my function? Is it moving up or down? Right? As I'm heading left, what's happening to my function? Am I moving up or down? And we've talked about moving left and right when we talk about domains. Right? And we've also talked about moving up and down when we talk about range and end behavior is combining those ideas. So, the behavior of a graph of a function as the input values get very small, and this seems weird. When I say very small, I say x goes to negative infinity. And you might think of infinity as a large number, but when there's the negative sign in front of it, that's a really large negative number, or we'll say those numbers are getting really small. All right, versus getting very large, that's when x goes to positive infinity. All right, that's referred to as the end behavior of the function. We can use words or symbols to describe the end behavior. And I'm going to write it up in a couple of ways because I, I want to show you the, the words behind it with some arrows. You'll hear me refer to arrows. But I also want us to start to look at calculus notation. And calculus notation likes to use symbols like this. X going to negative infinity, X going to positive infinity. So this means I'm headed left. That's a fancy way for saying I'm headed left. And this is a fancy way for saying I'm headed right. All right, so when x is going to negative infinity, I go left. When x is going to positive infinity, I go right. All right, so the figure below shows the end behavior of power functions, right? And those are the functions of the form kx to the n, some coefficient times a power, where n is a non-negative integer depending on the power and the constant. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of cases when we have a positive constant, right? So when our lead coefficient is positive, when k is positive. All right, and these are going to be broken up into, did you have an even power or did you have an odd power? So let's pretend we had an even power, right? Something like, and I'm just going to make this up, like 3x squared, right? If we had 3x squared, this could conceivably be its graph. Now, I'm not saying this function is the graph of 3x squared. I'm just giving you a for instance. So I'm going to actually, because I I don't want you to think it's 3x squared. I'm going to erase this. But for e any even powered power function with a positive coefficient, I want you to start to look at this notation, right? So this is saying as x goes to negative infinity, right? So this is saying as i had left on the x-axis, f of x is going to positive infinity. Now remember, f of x is our y values. Now when y's go to positive infinity, all right, which direction are you heading? And let's take a look. As I head left, where are my y values going? You see me getting larger and larger and larger. Those y values are heading to positive infinity. Or another way of saying that is I head up, right? Remember when we were talking about domain and range? Left forever, up forever. That's what that arrow would have said. And, and this is just a different way of writing it. So as x goes to negative infinity, our y goes to positive infinity. That is literally the end behavior on the left side of that graph. That, that's what we're talking about. Here, if you look, it says as x goes to positive infinity, well, we're talking about x's, so I'm heading right. I still have my y values going to positive infinity because I also have my y's going up on the right side, right? Because we've got left and up and right and up. And that's how we're unpacking that domain and range in terms of this conversation of end behavior. All right, so when it comes to end behavior, your setup will always be as x goes left and x goes right, what happens to your y's? All right, so as x goes to negative infinity and y goes to positive infinity, where are your y's going? And if you look at the other three options in here, you'll see they always start the same. x goes to negative infinity, x goes to positive infinity. Let me scooch this up just a moment or a bit so that we can see all four graphs. There we go, right? But still, negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity. That is how you always start 
your end behavior. And that's how I'll start it when we get to example two. All right, so this will always be the start. And then you have to tell me what your Y values are doing based on the arrows. So you can see here, if I'm headed left, my Y values are going down. That's why here I have the negative infinity. For this positive constant with the odd power, right? if I have X going to positive infinity, you see my Y values are headed up. right? So then we have down here, up here. And this is always gonna be left, right. And when I talk about an odd power with a positive coefficient, right, that might be something like 2x cubed. And again, I'm not saying that this is exactly the graph of 2x cubed, but it's not too far off from it either. All right, so let's try the flip of that. This was when you had a positive co coefficient, even power, odd power. What happens when k is negative? When your, your constant's negative, and again, even power, odd power. Well, you can see if you have a negative coefficient with an even power, both ends are going down. That's why you see down, down in words, or negative infinity, negative infinity in symbols. And again, we have left, right. All right, so for the end behavior, you've got an odd power but a negative lead coefficient. We're still going left and right. But you can see here, I'm going right arrow up, or right end, excuse me, left end up, my bad. I saw the word right here, and I, but that right goes to this, this part. Um, and then if I go to the right, I am headed down. Okay. So we've got all of that happening. Now this is just for power functions. We're gonna extend it to polynomials a little bit later in this section. And then I just want you to hear that there can be a lot of different end behaviors. When we get to rational functions and exponentials and logs, we might have horizontal asymptotes, we might have no end behavior, it really just depends. All right, now sometimes you'll see me, because I'm lazy, shortcut this. You'll see me frequently say that on an, for the end behavior, for the EB, if I have a positive coefficient and an even power, you might just see me write two arrows, up, up. All right, there are times for this end behavior when I just look at this as down, up, right? Because my left arrow was down, my right arrow was up. Here for end behavior, right, I have down, down. And here for end behavior, I have up, down. So there are a few ways you could write this, right? You see me writing it in words, as x goes left, y goes up, as x goes right, y goes up. That's great. Really, we wanna get comfortable with these infinity symbols because that's what you're gonna see in calculus. And then I'm always, I'm always a fan of lazying out. So a lot of times you'll see me talk about end behavior. I'm sorry, arrows, that's what I mean. I am talking about end behavior, but arrows. All right, other things to just take note of before we move to the examples. When there are even powers, your arrows are gonna go the same direction. So it's either both up or both down. When you have odd powers, they'll go in opposite directions. So you see left end down, right end up. You see here, left end up, right end down. Okay, so that's one way to distinguish them if you wanna look even versus odd. Another way you could look at it is you can go, there's, there's a commonality with positive co constants and negative constants. For this positive constant, take note that the right end is always up. So if k is positive, your right end is always up. And if k is negative, your right end is always down. So that's another pattern that you can see. So you can split them up even odd, right? Same direction, opposite directions. You can do positive constant, negative constant, right end up, right end down. Okay? All right, so with that, I'm gonna scooch this paper up and let's see if we can get some end behavior under our belts with these four power functions. So I do have four power functions. I want us to just take note, right? We see even power, even power, odd, odd, negative lead coefficient, positive lead coefficient. So let's just categorize this, right? So we have an even power and we have a negative constant. Here we have an odd power and a positive constant. Here I have, let me write it off here, we have um, odd power and I have a negative constant. 
And on part D, what do I have? It looks like even power and positive constant. So I put all four options in here, right? There were four options in this table up here, and there are the four options in A through D. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, I wanna work on this. So it says use symbols for the end behavior to describe the end behavior of the graph of each function. So symbols, that's the calculus symbols I wanna work on. Once I do the symbols, I'll switch it over to the arrows, but I really wanna practice those symbols. So every time I ask you for symbols, you will say as X goes left and as X goes right. This will always be your setup. So as X goes left and as X goes right, we wanna see what our Y values are doing. So I'm gonna just write that for every single one because I want you to see that commonality. Okay, so take a moment, get that down. All right, X is going left, going right, left, right. Now, it might be helpful before we actually write the F of X notation, the F of X symbols, to just kind of sketch this in your head. If I was thinking about negative X to the fourth, it's gonna look something like that, right? I can see both ends are down. So if my left end, right, because this is going left, my left end is going down, then I know F of X is headed to negative infinity. And if my right end is down, I, I know f of x as I head right is also headed to negative infinity. And that's again from knowing that if I have an even power, they both head the same direction. And because it's a negative coefficient, they're both heading down, okay? All right, if I've got x cubed, that's one of our toolkit functions, right? We know it looks something like that. So I see left end down, right end up. So if my left end is down, that means f of x is going to negative infinity. And if my right end is up, that means f of x is going to positive infinity. Okay, so let's try negative power, excuse me, negative coefficient odd power. That's gonna go the other way. It's gonna look something like that, right? They should have opposite ends, but that right end should be down. Now I'm gonna go left end first. My left end is up. So f of x is gonna go to positive infinity my right end is down, so f of x here is going to go to negative infinity. Even power positive constant is gonna look something like this. And that would mean both of my ends were up, so my y values are headed up. Okay, so there's how you can write the end behavior in symbols. Um, I'm gonna erase these little functions right here just so I can put some words to it, and then I'll put my arrows in. So let me try this with words. If we wanted to do it with words, and again, I wasn't asked to do it with words, I was asked for symbols, and here are the symbols, but I just wanna show you. So I could have said here, both ends down. Right? And if I wanted arrows, I could write arrows. All right, this is the other one that's the easier one, right? This is both ends up. And my arrows would be both of these up. Okay, over here, oops, I'm gonna sneeze. Hold on, give me a sec, wait for it. Oh, is it gonna go away? I think it's gonna go away. Okay, sorry about that. So here I have an odd power. So if I have an odd power, again, I have left end down. right end up. So this would be my arrows. Here, I have the opposite. This one I have left end, oops, this should say, just kidding, here we go, left end up, no I'm good, left end up, and this should say right end down. And we should go this way, all right? So, You've got a few options here, right? I really want us to get in the habit of using the infinities because that's the calculus notation. You'll frequently see me, again, lazy out and put arrows, but the problem with arrows is they really only work with powers and polynomials, and we're gonna move so far beyond that that the arrows don't apply that often. 
Um, I, and I rarely use words. That's probably the, the one I use the least often. All right, so we've talked about power functions, but what we're going to do when we move over to example three is we're gonna start talking about not just what happens with the power function, but what's the end behavior for a polynomial when I start adding and subtracting power functions to each other. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and I'll see you in a bit, bye.